What is sorting? Well, sorting is the process of arranging elements in a specific order, typically in ascending or descending order. Sorting is a fundamental, so sorting is fundamental in computer science because it optimizes the efficiency of other algorithms that require sorted data, such as a search algorithm. So the importance of sorting, we first have efficiency. Sorted data makes it easier and faster to search and analyze and manipulate. Data organization. Uh, sorting helps in organizing data, making it more readable and manageable. Algorithm optimization. Many algorithms and binary search perform better when the data is sorted and data processing. Sorting is essential in various data processing tasks, such as merging data sets or creating reports. So there are set, we'll look at some common uh, sorting algorithms because there are several sorting algorithms and each with their own approach to organizing data. You can make your own. Um, here are a few commonly used ones. The selection sort. The concept here is to find the smallest element and then swap it with the first element. Then find the second, uh, then find the second smallest element, swap it with the second element. Then continue this process until the list is sorted. So let me give you an example. Okay. So we'll take our initial list. Here, uh, we'll do 64, 25, 12, uh, 22, and 11. So we need to find the smallest element. So essentially, we're going to find the smallest element. We're going to say, hey, we're going to start with the first one. You're the smallest element. Is 64 less than 25? No, it's not. So 25 is now the smallest element. Is 25 uh, less than 12? No, it's not. So now 12 is the smallest element. Is 12 less than 22? Yes, it is. 12 still remains the smallest element. Is 12 less than 11? No, it's not. So 11 is the smallest element. We realize we reached the end. So that is our smallest element. That now gets swapped places here with the 64. So now we get 11, 25, 12, 22, and 64. Okay. Now that we're done with the first one, we now go to the second element. Um, so 25 is the second smallest element. Well, is 25 less than 12? No, it's not. So 12 becomes a new small cell, a second small element. Then we say, hey, is that less than 22? Yes, it is. Then we say, hey, is that less than 64? Yes, it is. So it remained the smallest element. So we swap that with the second spot. Okay. Then we go to the third spot. It's 25. Uh, uh, excuse me. It's 25. The, uh, the third smallest element, is it less than, or set it equal to the third smallest element? Is it the, is it less than 22? No, it's not. So 22 is actually the third smallest element. Is that less than 64? Yes, it is. So it remains that because we realize we're at the end of our list. So here, I have 11, 12, 22, 25, and 64. You may be saying, oh, we're done, but we're not because it doesn't know it's done. So we now go to the fourth one. It is 25. Uh, we pick 25 of these smallest. Is 25 less than 64? Yes, it is. Oh, wait. Go back through. Is 64 the, uh, set that to be the last one? And oh, it's the last one. We're done. Okay. So that's how you do a selection sort. Bubble sort. The concept here is to compare each pair of adjacent elements and swap them if they are in the wrong order. This process really is repeated until the list is sorted. So let's take a look at our initial uh, list. We have five, two, nine, one, and five. So we're going to compare five and two. And then in this case, five is not less than two, so we swap them. OK, now we can compare the five with the nine. And that's fine. So. We're good there. Now we go with the nine and the one. And nine is less than one, so we swap those. And because we swap those, now we got to look at the nine in the next day, nine and five. That one is also swapped good. So 
and we swap those. And because we have reached the end, we now have to go back to the beginning. So two is not less. A two and five are already good. So we go to five and one. Those are not right. So we swap those. We get two, number one, number five. Uh, five, five, five. So five and five are equal values, so those are fine. So we don't have to swap those. And then I go here, five and nine, those are fine, so we don't have to swap those. Then we, since we're at the end of it, we start at the beginning again. So two and one, those are not right. So one and two, we swap those then. Um, five, five, and nine. Then we say, okay, since we swap two and five, are you guys good? And they are good. So that's what you're there. Five is five, are you guys good? You're good there. Five and nine, you're good. Cool. All right, so that's how a bubble sort works. Let me put it to you. All right, an insertion sort. So the concept here is to build a sorted list one element at a time. Take each element from the unsorted list and insert it in the correct position in the sorted list. So our initial list here is going to start at 12, 11, 13, 5, and 6. So we'll start with the second element, 11, and compare it to 12 and insert it before it. So this becomes 11, 12, 13, 5, 6. Okay. Take the next element, 13, and it is already in the correct position. We leave it alone. Take the next element, 5, and 5 will get inserted in the front because it's smaller than all the other ones. So we go here. And we go 5, 11, 12, 13, and 6. And then we go to the uh, next element in our uh, list, which is 6. So 6 is the um, is not less than 5, but it is, it is less than 11. So we didn't know we have 5, 6, 11, 12, 13. So literally, Get your whole list and say, all right, I'm going to go through uh, 12. Well, that's fine where it is. Go to the next uh, 11. All oh, it needs to be before 12. I'm going to start before 12. Go to the next element, 13. Oh, well, 13 is not uh, less than 11 or 12, so it's fine where it is. Get 5. Oh, 5 is less than 11, so I'm going to put it here in front. 6. Oh, that's not less than 5. Check 11. Oh, it is. Boom. You're just literally taking each part and inserting it where it goes. Okay. Next, merge sort. This concept um, divides the list into halves. And then you sort each half, and then you merge the sorted halves to form a single sorted list. Okay. So let's take a look at our initial list here with 38, 27, 43, 39, 18, 82, excuse me, and 10. So we're going to divide this into halves. So we'll have two halves here. And we're going to divide this uh, so that we can have three. Okay. And then the latter half. Five. Okay. Then we're going to divide that in halves. So we got 38, 27, and 43, and 3. Came from that previous half. And then inside of here, we got 9 and 82. And over here, we just got a little 10. All right. And so we're going to keep dividing this essentially until we get single parts. Okay. Uh, seven. That that's uh, oh well that's wrong yet. We'll get to that point. We got forty three. Three. Uh, 
82. Okay. Now everything's broken up. Uh, we can now merge and sort them. So we'll merge two pieces back together and we'll sort them while doing so. So in this case, 38 and 27, they should be reversed. So it should be 27 and 38. So we'll merge those pieces back together. 43 and um, 3. So we merge these pieces together. They just switch faces. So 3, 43. Um, we go with that one. Now 9 and uh, 82. Merge these pieces together. They, or they're actually fine. And then we got the tail. Okay. Now we can merge together again because we have the 27, 38, 3, and 4. So we merge these back together and put them in the appropriate order. So then this would go. Um, Three, twenty-seven, thirty-eight, 27, 38, and 43. Okay. So essentially, like taking both your smallest ones, see which one is actually smaller. Okay. And this, uh, checking it against the last one here, okay, it's fine. Because we already know that this is in order. So now we got 38, check that before the. Yeah. Okay. Now, our other one, merge those together, take the two smaller elements, nine is in, nine is smaller. And uh, then we go to 10 and 82, 10 smaller, then we got 82, okay? Now the last one, bring it all together, check the both smallest ones, three smaller. Then check the next thing, 27 to nine, nine smaller. Check the next thing, uh, 27 to 10, 10 smaller. Check the next thing, 27 smaller. Check the next thing, 38 smaller. Next thing, 43 smaller, and then 82 is the only thing left over. So bring it out. And that sort it, that's merge sort. Okay. Um, the last most common one will be a quick sort. So the concept here is to select the pivot element from the array. So pick something that you can pivot around. So you can partition the other elements into two sub arrays according to whether they are less than or greater than that pivot. And then recursively, so we do something over again, you apply the same process to those sub arrays by picking new pivot and then uh, selecting spots to see is this less than it or greater than it. And then you keep doing that. So I'm just going to choose the pivot to be the first thing. You can use whatever you want. Actually, you can last, but. We have our list here, 10, 7, 8, 9, and 1. I'm going to pick my pivot to be 10. So essentially, I'm going to see, um, what, I'm going to take, it, take 10, and I'm going to see, hey, what's less, I'm going to have a less than spot and a greater than spot. And so I'm going to take each element. Is 7 less than 10? It is, so it goes here. Is 8 less than 10? It is, so it goes here. Is 9 less than 10? It is, it goes here. Is 1 less than 10? It is, it goes here. Is 5 less than 10? It is, it goes here. So nothing went over here, so I don't even need that. So, if I'm always using the first one, then I can do the same thing here. Okay. So, I'm going to um, keep 10 by itself, and I'm going to do the same thing with the 7. All right. So, um, I got 7, and I already know 10 is over here. So, my sub arrays. Uh, to the left and right of 7. I say, hey, is 8 less than uh, 7? No, it's not. So it goes over here. Is 9 less than 7? No, it's not. So it goes over here. Is 1 less than 7? It is. So it goes here. Is 5 less than 7? It is. So it goes over here. Okay. And uh, then I would apply again. So starting in this guy, I start with the one. So um, yeah, 
Western it. Oh, and that's another seven over here. And then we'll look at the next one. So let's first look at the one and five. So only thing left in there is five. Is five less than one? No, it's not. So it goes here. So nothing's here. So that's done there. Now let's look at now let's let eight be the pivot. So we need things less than eight and greater than eight. So we only have the nine to worry about. Is eight less than eight? Sorry, is nine less than eight? It's not. So nothing's here. Now we'll go here. So we're done there. And we just had the good old 10 over here. Let's take it out. Okay. So because we've gone all the way down, now we can go back up and merge these things together. And so uh, when we do so, we have the 1, the comma, the 5, the comma, uh, back together with the 7, with the 8, with the 9, and the 10. And we are quickly sorted. Okay. So there are some practical uses of sorting. So again, it organizes, first it organizes data. So sorting names alphabetically in the content list would be an example of that. Um, you could, it helps make, it helps with searching data. So if you want to do a binary search, it requires for you to have a sorted list to efficiently find elements. Uh, how are you going to find it? Search, how are you going to find something that's not sorted? Uh, data processing. If you want to uh, sort any cells data by date, you need to analyze trends, you need a way to be able to do so. Um, a user interface, displaying sorted information in tables or lists for better user experiences. It's easier for you to do a look at this. Okay. So in summary, sorting is a crucial concept in programming that involves arranging data in a particular order. It enhances the efficiency of data processing and is widely used in various applications. Understanding different sorting algorithms and their applications is fundamental for optimizing performance in programming tasks. So, go back to you.